So, first thing that you need to do, you need to apply for a funding. So that is what we are going to do today. Okay. So grant, you call it funding, you call it grant, you call it finance, anything that you want to call, but you need to apply for something. Okay. So that the money is given to you to do a research project. Okay. So while you are doing a research project. So let's say you are applying for a grant, okay, and you got it. So what is the next step? So you need to plan your research. So how you want to do it? Okay, when you want to start? Where is your? All of you have got your research topic track item. All of you already know right who is your supervisor is. Have you had a discussion with the supervisor? Have you going met anyone? Have you met your supervisor? Raise up your hand. No. You met. You met. You? No. Did, did you meet your supervisor? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, Papa. You. you? Yeah. So all of you have met your supervisor. Yeah. The supervisor might have given you an idea what project you want to do. Correct. So now you need to plan right. Plan your project. Which one you need to do first? You cannot be doing something without knowing what is that. So where you want to start? For you to enter this room for this today's lecture, first thing what you must do? First thing, huh? Huh? Where the gate is? First of all, you must wake up. <laughs> Your class is at night. At least you must wake up at eight for you to get ready. So if you didn't wake up at eight, even though you know where is the class, who's teaching you, and everything, wow, my correct. Okay, so that is on research planning. So we will be doing it, and I'm teaching you on research planning, research monitoring, budgeting, how to do data collection, what type of data can be collected. So we will we will cover in a very broader scope. Okay. So that you understand. And then there are two more lecturers to be doing. Dr. Chu will be doing on communication. So for research management, communication is important also. And then Dr. Lai will be doing on health and safety. Then I'll be coming back to see you again on the biosafety as well. Okay, why we focus on biosafety? Because all of you are students who's doing on molecular medicine with lab related to biological sample, okay, either it's human, animal, or micro. So you need to know what are the safety aspects on biological safety. So that is the whole course is about. So fortunately, we don't have exams on this course. So you all of you are happy, okay? But you will have presentation, you will have a project paper, the project paper is 25% of your mark. Oh, a lot. Your presentation will carry another 25%. It's going to be quite a lot. Then you have a discussion with Dr. Chiu and Dr. Eric, which will cost you another 25%. Okay? You need to be really, really involved in active discussion via online. 
It's not class discussion. I'm asking you answer. I give you marks. No, everything has to be recorded. Okay, and then you have like two assignments, which will cost you another two sets. Okay, so literally hundred percent. Project paper, twenty-five percent marks. Presentation, twenty-five percent marks. If you flop these two, you can be sure that you are going to somewhere else. Okay, your marks is going to go below the B. So this two is very important. And one of the the project paper is from Zan and Lee. So I'll give you, I'll explain to you, then I'll give you the assignment according to the project paper, what you need to do. Okay, and you have enough time. Okay, and that run application is going to be based on your final year project that you have doing. Later I'll explain that, okay, after this class. And then presentation, I'll give you later what's the topic. It's an individual presentation, not group. Everyone needs to prepare, okay, according to the topic being given. And then we will have a day for you to present. You need to present and we will grade you. Okay? And then your assignments. Make sure you do well in your assignments. Two assignments, one of the assignments will be 15 marks, another assignment will be 10 marks. Okay, and then again I'm repeating, you have two discussions. It's not not the discussion, it won't be with me. It will be with Dr. Chu and Dr. Eric. Okay, one of the assignments is 10 marks, another assignment is 15 marks. Sorry, it's not assignment, it's discussion. Okay? So you have to actively participate in the discussion. Because this is the course that you can score well. Why? No exam. Okay? No exam. You don't know, I do last minute revisions with you, still somebody will answer the exam. So this course is easy because no exam. If you have enough time to work on the assignment, Please work on that. Okay? Any questions regarding the course? Okay? You go to the course outline, everything will be there. If it's not there, let, let me know. I'll update uh, it for you. So, this is literally what the course is about. Okay, very simple, very easy. Okay? It's not very difficult because, anyhow, you will be going through the cycle. Of project planning, what you need to do, how you collect data, for example. Okay, so if you have no questions, I will start. Okay, as I say, the main thing for you, like even for me, so when I join in as a lecturer or a researcher here, what is the first thing I got in as my KPI? You know what is KPI, right? KPI means the return of investment that I need to give for my salary. So what is the first thing that I was asked to do the first day I reported to duty and I went and saw the director? I need to do this. Without funding, okay, there is no project. Without project, there is no master's PhD student. Without master's PhD student, there is no publication. Okay, there is no research output, there is no product, that means you are seeing product here, product there, okay, diagnostic kit. Without this, nothing will happen. So, when you look at all the lecturers, our main KPI is this. We need to apply grants and we need to do projects. So, you know all the projects that you all got with different, different lecturers, because they have money for that. They have applied a grant, they got a grant, small, big, I'm not sure. Okay? Some of the grants could be as big as millions. Some of the grants can be as small as 20,000, 25,000. So what is dependent on how they manage? Because a smaller grant means a smaller spending. Okay, so first thing is important. So what is a grant? You see, this is the definition of a grant. It's a mechanism by which agency, whose agency? Funding body, anyone who wants to give you some money. Okay? All of you are here, who's in scholarship? Who, who are here who got scholarship? Raise your hand. 
どうすかって言うの。まだまだだ。言うで、パレンツはそこで言う。おいや、そうじゃ。あまり言う。How you came to study here? Oh, oh, yeah. Own money or scholarship? Money. Your money. Your father's money. Yeah. But from where? Huh? From where? You're working. Yeah. So you save money to come here. Yeah. Papa? Own fund. You see? So you don't have a. Agency, but your agency now is your parents. Like him, his agency is himself. Okay, so what is the KPI? What is the outcome from this? Your degree. Okay, so your degree. So you see, which an agency awards money to fund a research study or other activity such as educational program. Service program, demonstration, or research project. So first of all, you must understand people don't give money for free. Your parents also own support. You don't give money to you for free. Why they give you money? So that you will have a master's degree. You will improve yourself. You will have a better way of life. Correct? Is to improve. So. Nothing is free. Okay, so especially when they, when they give you grant money, they have their own agenda and their KPI. Let's say I'm all your lecturers have taken you to do a research project. Is it free? You can do any time you want, or if you don't get results, it's fine. You can still pass. No, right? You have to achieve the objective. Okay, so when a funder gives you funding, they have they are plucking certain objectives that you must achieve. Okay, so understand that. Okay, nothing comes for FOC, but they will give you with a return of investment. We call it as return of investment. Understand? Okay, just the first slide. Talking too much. Okay, so why you apply for a grant? Why? Advance scientific knowledge in your field and advance your professional career. Okay, like me, when I have more grants, what does it mean? Let's say you look into my profile. I have a lot of students, I have a lot of grants. I have been constantly having grants. What does it show? Useless. Not doing work. Just applying grant and doing project. No. It shows that a researcher is is what is good. Is good in research. Is producing more output. So when you produce more output, more people want to give you funding because they know that you will deliver. Correct. Okay, if I give you a work, your parents give you a work. Okay, something. Then you do, you finish, you pass for that. Done. They give you more work. <laughs> okay. But for you to get up into the professional career, you need that. So why are you doing masters? Is to improve your professional career. Then you want to do PhD. Is to further up to improve. Okay, you don't stop at somewhere. Okay, something like that. And then a grant means that expert in the field acknowledge your idea as important and worthy for public or private support. Okay, let's say now I'm applying a grant. Okay. So I'm applying a grant saying that okay, I want to use uh, antibody to treat cancer. Okay, and people ask me, so what antibody do I have? So I show them, 
this is this antibody that I have developed something novel. But when I apply, when I write the grant, I submit. If you think they will give it to you to evaluate, no, they give to experts in the field, who are real experts, who have track record, who have done a lot of research, who have, who have a lot of publications, who have also a whole lot of grants, they give it to them to evaluate. When this expert evaluate and they give you the grant, it means that the idea that I have come up is important and worthy of so that the public could use it. The knowledge could be used by the public or if I do very fundamental work, other scientists could use the knowledge. Okay, so that is why getting a grant is important for all the researchers because when you are here, it means that all of you want to become a researcher at the end of the day. Okay? So grant means an enhanced prestige to the institutions also. More grant got by the researchers, inform gets better in. Inform is good. Inform researchers is good. Okay, something. A grant means contribution to the financial health of your department school. So what does it mean? More grant, we have more projects. More project means what? More students, more consumables, we could get new equipment. From the grant money so it shows the institute or the faculty or the school is going to do well okay new opportunity for research assistance grant means new program that otherwise can be too expensive for your institution to support and implement okay like uh, previously when they come up with these kids professor asma the previous the founding director, she got a grant called Golden Goose. You know what is the meaning of Golden Goose, right? Have you heard of this tale? The goose lays golden egg, so people become rich. So something like that, a grant named Golden Goose, and she got funded for 15 million. Not 1 million, 2 million. 15 million to develop a somewhere else like today, which is needed by the whole world. And the kit is being used by more than 80, 90 countries. So, that kind of project to develop kit, to buy things, government cannot support. Or USN cannot support. They don't have enough money. How can they give just one person 15 million? So, this kind of big projects, big grants, could support them and that thing could be implemented. You understand? Okay, if I went ask inform, Okay, can you give me 50,000? I want to support one student from each month. They say no. In front of money. Support just one person. If they give me 50,000, they must give all the lecturers 50,000. It could cost them a lot of money. We have about 22 lecturers. So you count, it's about 1.1 million. Just 50,000 per person. Okay? So, why apply for a grant? So as I keep on repeating to you, I've already told you why you need to apply for a grant. Okay, it's for a professional growth strategy. It should become a long-range plan for your professional growth and development. Build individual credential. Build a track record of funding. What do you mean by track record of funding? Which means that the agencies have trust in you. They have given you grant. You have delivered, you have shown return of investment, you have given publication, you have given students, all product. So, and then you have spent money very well. Okay, your budget is good. So when you, when you, have a, when you, when you build a track record of funding, a good track record of funding, then, you know, like people say credit score. Do you know what is credit score? Financial credit score? Don't know. <laughs> okay, when you want to go and ask for a car loan, when you want to buy a car or a house, you think banks simply give you money. Oh, okay, go and buy. No, they check your background. Okay, they check how much salary you have. And then they check how's your credit, credit score means 
when you buy things, when you take loans, do you pay it diligently? Do you pay properly? Can you pay back? Are you a good paymaster? Okay, let's say I'm using my, I think you use credit card. Okay, some of you use credit cards. Your parents swipe, swipe here, swipe there, swipe here. Money is not coming out. Credit card means you take credit from the bank, which means that you are, you are taking a loan. But you need to pay it. So if you don't pay it, you have a lot of areas, which means that uh, debt in your credit card and everything, it gives you a very low credit score. Which means that you are bad in managing your money. So how, how can I give you a car loan? So what do you expect? The bank would expect that you cannot pay back. Because your credit, you are not paying back properly. Same thing in grant, when you have, because every single thing is recorded. Even I am agency A, you are agency B, people are agency C, they can look at my record. Okay, when, I'm, when I give uh, my final report, the funder gives saying that, oh, you didn't spend properly, the money was not spent diligently, you spent it wrong, you didn't, okay, and then they would put that KPI not achieved. So every other person could, could, could see my thing. So when I'm not building a good funding record, I have problem. Work on teams with more experienced researchers, okay? Which means that if you are new, when, when I started my career, okay, the first day I come, my boss tell me that, Prof. Asma told me that you must go and apply for few grants. So what did I do? I cannot simply write something that I only know. The only thing that I know during that time was my PhD project. Let, let me be realistic. I don't want to tell that I was a superhuman, I know everything, no. I, I was a fresh graduate. I just graduated, finished my Goiwa, I worked for a while. The only big thing I know in depth was my PhD project. Apart from my PhD project, other thing I, I just know surface. So how can I go and apply a grant with my PhD project, which is already completed? I need to do something else. So. I went and talked with more experienced researchers. Talked to my director, Prof Rama, Prof Hosni at that time, Associate Professor Dr. Poa, Mohan Professor Poa, all of them are retired now. They were the seniors. I went and talked to everyone. Then the first project that I did was on genotyping of Toxoplasma of that. Okay, not anything to do with my PhD. My PhD was on cervical cancer. But the knowledge that I had on handling PCR, qPCR and everything, so genotyping is PCR, RFLP. So when I talked, she said, oh, I have this idea, I don't know how to do. So you're good at PCR. So you apply, I'll support you. So she is very strong on toxoplasma. People in the world know her about toxoplasma in Malaysia. It's drama. So when I applied the drum, Saying that I want to do this with her, immediately I got the grant for 120,000. So you see, these people would help you to get something. Okay, so that is how you work. You cannot say I'm the biggest. No, you are not. Okay, no, you are not. Even now, I'm not. Okay, I don't know something. So you get people to work together. So that builds more strength. Develop a plan for long range and personal development. So even now you are here. So how you want to develop your idea? All of you are sitting here in a research world. Why at the first thing you did masters? You should have gone and work, sustain a degree. Why you need to waste your one and a half years to two years? All of you flew away from your home from your comfort zone. Home, the place that you are born, is your comfort zone. It's hard. You don't know. You don't know this, this guy we know is going to teach you what, how he's going to speak. So you take the challenge and come here. 
that is because you have a long range plan and you want to improve your personal development. Same thing in research, you always need to have that for you to improve is how many projects that you have, how much that you have delivered, how much publication that you have produced, how many products that you have in your research, how many patents do you have, how many copyrights do you have. That tells you, gives you whether that you are a prolific researcher or not. Why there is a award called Nobel Prize? All of you know what is Nobel Prize, right? Don't say no one. <laughs> okay. Why there's an award? That it has been given to someone who is very exceptional in the field. All the fields, you know, medicine, chemistry, physics, nuclear physics. There are a lot of fields. Each medal has a name, Nobel Prize medal. So that shows that that person has reached the pinnacle of something. Okay, the project that I worked on cervical cancer, GHE, the guy who discovered the HPV was Harald Zahausen, a German. He is the first one who discovered HPV. The first discovery was in Germany. Okay. He got a Nobel Prize. He got a Nobel Prize, if I'm not mistaken, the baby was in the baby. When he was nearing 70 something, late 70s. Because he had done extensive, extensive research. So why did he get? Because he had made a very significant contribution saying that the human papilloma virus is the main cause of cervical cancer. And that human papilloma virus later was found to cause oral cancer and found to cause tongue cancer. And then they have identified the virus and they have shown that which part of the virus causes cancer and that is now people are using it as a biomarker and also people are studying the HPV to do the treatment. And the cervical cancer type well, that means quite a bit. Yes, Ali? <laughs> oh, forgot. Anna, Ali was it. So, so, for planning runs away a little bit. This is about research planning. Okay. So, that is how he got that. And because this is how that he developed his personal development. Okay. So, where, where did he want to go? That is important. Okay. 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 When you look at this, when you look at this, when you apply a how it's supposed to work? I like this because I, I'm, I've gone through this. Write the grant, get money, you do research, you publish a result, and then you write the grant again. Am I correct? That is what your understanding is. But it doesn't work like this at all. Okay? You see, you do research. Okay, we do research. So, get results but don't publish them yet. Call them preliminary results. Write a grant to do what you already did. Get money, then you publish. Even this one, is it right or wrong? Even this one, people used to do this. This one doesn't work. You use your preliminary data and you write the grant what you want to do next. That is what it works now. This is about 20, 30 years ago. Why I still want to put it this to show to you that people, some people come and say, no, you do something first. No, you have some data that you have in your PhD that you haven't published yet, write a grant for that. No, it doesn't work. 
Why it doesn't work? Why it doesn't work? Now, all of this preliminary data is the current technologies and improvement that we have is very small. Okay, my PhD was purely on protein protein interaction. Okay, purely fundamental, purely on protein protein interaction. But now that protein protein interaction could be done with AFM and SPR. During that time, SPR was very new and expensive. AFM was not available for biological material. So what I did was good. But when I came to work in less than five years, what I did is very fundamental work and actually people want more result, more input. Okay? So usually what we do now is we get preliminary results, we use the preliminary results and show the funders. You see, initial data is here, and if we can improve this, we will be achieving what we want. Okay? You cannot write something absolutely you don't have anything. Why? Remember that. Okay? Second, you cannot write a grant saying that Sa'at did that, he got it. Sapa did that, he got she got it. And Sana did that, she got it. So with this, I want to do that so, so that I'll get this. You cannot. Why? Why? You all have done it. Why you have done it? I give you a uh, factual thing. Sa'a did it, Sana did it, Sapa did it. I don't have to go and repeat that. But I want to use their, their idea and I want to improve that to get it. But I need to prove all the three ideas at least works in an experimental setting. And I already have a preliminary data which I'm going to use your results, three of your findings and I'm going to do objective one, two, three, four, five, six. So at least the first objective I could have tried it to show it works. Yes. No. Good. Okay. For example, let's come back to lean expensive. Okay. Who have driving license? Raise your hand. Driving license. Raise your hand. Don't don't be shy. You don't have driving license. Okay, so you don't have. Okay. So you see, now your aim is to go and get a driving license. So what you are, what you are telling is, I have been with Saad. I've been with Saad. I saw how Saad drives. Okay. So this is his driving style. He 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 drives the four-wheel drive. Okay. Then Sana. I have checked with Sana, I have seen how Sana drives. Okay, Sana uses a manual, Sana uses a, a automatic. So I know what's the difference between manual and automatic. So with that, can I give you a license? With that, can you go and convince your father saying that you want to go and take driving license? No. You should at least know the car. What is the car? You want that hands on. You must see it. You must drive it first. That's what I'm trying to say. Even though other people have published something and you have seen that, you must have done it in your setting. Some preliminary work before you can move. If not, cannot. Okay? Wow. Talking a lot. Okay, so funding. Your interest plus the interest of a funding agency. Okay. So what is your interest? And 
Thus, your interest match the interest of the funded entity. Okay, let's say now I'm the funder. Okay, my my idea is to develop a, dino, a diagnostic tool for infectious diseases. Okay, but what you're writing? You want to develop a diagnostic tool for leptospira. Is it correct? Does it match? Is leptospira is infectious in this? I'm not giving you an exam, don't worry. Leptospira is infectious in this or not? It is. So you are in the track. But if you are going to apply for diagnostic for TB, is it infectious disease? Yes. Don't scared, just answer. <laughs> okay, I'm not a cannibal. Okay? So if you want to do it with obesity, is it infectious disease? No. So do you think I will fund it? I even don't I don't even consider. They call it TKO. What is TKO? Technical knockout. Okay, so when, when they receive a grant, oh, doesn't match to the fundings criteria. Oh, they don't even read. By your title, by your summary, they throw it away. Because what they want for infection this is you are giving for obesity. So they don't even read. They call it technical knockout. Okay. Why I can tell you this? Because I'm one of the reviewers for national grants. The FRGS, BRGS grant. I'm, I'm one of the reviewers for USN and also for Ministry of Higher Education. So we, we have been trained there. We have been told this. Okay. And what is our role? Because in of fund, there are a lot of grants. There were about more than 10,000 applications in this cycle. You cannot be giving it to everyone. So the, our role is to find fault. What mistakes that you do so that we don't give you that. So that what we need us. Finding mistakes so that they we shouldn't be giving you money. Because they're too much. Because this is a national funding. It's big. So a lot of people ask for money. Same thing, any grant, when there's an opening, a lot of people will go and ask. Okay? So for you all it's easy. Okay? When when you're choosing the topics, what title, who who like which answer that you want. There are more projects than number of students. When there's less projects and number of students is a lot, then they will do selection. Okay, so the main thing is this you must know what you are applying for. Okay, you cannot go and apply a diagnostic kit development okay, to the Ministry of Human Resource. What is Ministry of Human What Human Resource does? They look into employment employability of people and so on. If you go and ask them about diagnostic kit, do they do they give you fund? They don't even see. They will look, they will put your name saying that this, this person should go and consult doctors. <laughs> okay? So joke aside is that why I put this picture here is that this dog is going to try to catch the branch. Which is far fetched. Can it go and catch? It's difficult. Because the funding agency is not interested. Okay. So, I give you an example. This is the local funding that is available in the country. In Malaysia, you are here. I cannot. You, you can go and check about your country, I'm not sure. So there are main two agencies that give funding 
from the government which is Ministry of Higher Education and Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation okay so here if you look they give you FRGS this was open and I was the as I told you there are more than 10,000 applications but they only want to give about 15 percent out of that okay so this is fundamental research grant scheme PRGS is prototype research grant scheme so if you look at here we call it TRL what is TRL this is the term is being used worldwide it's not special term for Malaysia technology readiness level okay technology readiness level so what is the level of technology your project has now currently so when you want to do fundamental they allow one one means conceptual of idea you want to show something you have this idea and you want to show that your idea works so but when you want to go for PRGS prototype research grant scheme so you should have completed your FRGS and you must show that your idea works now you want to convert that idea into a prototype example example let's put it very simple all of you which you understand that now you want to find a biomarker for COVID a new biomarker for COVID which could identify all the states so that you apply 5RGS you say strain this, strain A, strain B, strain C, strain D you, you have done preliminary work you have done uh, what? genome annotation and you have found that this specific region available in all the strains and now you want to prove that this one would work as a biomarker you want to test it on each and every strain whether they have it you want to isolate, you want to test, you want to sequence and you want to do something so once you have make sure that this works now you can apply for PRGS saying that now I want to put this marker into a dish stick so that it can detect all the strings so that is PRGS, then you have PRGS ok after PRGS you cannot go down because from here is here you see formulation of concept level which refers to plan or design of new technology process or product with the potential for commercialization so once you finish this you will go and apply this one to bring it up so TRGS is trans research grant scheme transdisciplinary which means that you must have people from three different disciplines why is three different disciplines? for example I have a work on mesopharyngeal carcinoma ok mine is a team grant which you have and gives so we must have at least three different people so we have from people from molecular medicine and biology who are looking into sample and NPC sample testing it and looking into the uh, EBV virus and we have social scientists who looks into after the treatment how the patient's behavior social lifestyle improve before and after the treatment and then we have another team we call it as financial help ok so this thing looks into what? this thing looks into how much the burden and hospital has when a patient is admitted for NPC for treatment how much hospital is spending because most of the NPC patient who comes they go to the government because they need to go into radiotherapy which is not much available in the private ok so they look into the cost how much the, hospital, the burden of the hospital you see so this three three discipline is different totally different I'm looking into EBV virus 
the viral load. Somebody is looking into the patient's uh, behavior, how they socialize before and after. Okay, somebody is looking into the financial burden, not just the hospital of the patients also. How much they, how long they need to travel to the clinic, how did they need to see, how much they spend. Because not all the clinic in northern region, in northern peninsula Malaysia, from Taipei, from Perak, from Ipoh, until Perlis, which is about 200 kilometers radius. In NGH and only IPVT Batam has the surgeons, oncologists and surgeons who can do radiotherapy. So they need to be sent either to Penang General Hospital or Batam IPVT. So it's not easy. Somebody from Perlis, they need to travel for the treatment. So a few people are looking into that. So that is trans. Then we have LRVS, long term research grant. We look into five years planning grant. And then my lab, my lab is something different where that you work in industry. I, I already finished PRGS, now I can apply my lab. I say that I want to bring this product to commercialization. You see, technology readiness level 8, which means that now is product demo. 9 means it's already in the market selling. Okay, so who can bring that company? So this grant saying that they can give you up to 3 million. If government gives you 3 million, company must pump in another 3 million. It has to match. Okay, the last one, PPRN. This is a smaller fund where that uh, an industry comes and asks you, saying that they have this problem, can you solve it? Then you apply for the grant to solve it. This also, they have a different, if the company is small, the company put 30%, government put 70%. If the company is big, government put 30%, company put 70%. So the maximum funding they will give is, the government will give is 300000 So these are the current grant scheme that they have. If you go to your e-learn, if you find the old file, don't use that. Okay, I will upload the new one. So the, these are the latest that you can get from this year. Okay, some of it, like PRGS and LRGS, hasn't been open for two years. Hasn't been open. Very simple, no money. Okay, so all the government have these issues, government funding. Okay, this one, TAG 1, TAG 2, we call it TAG. So this is mainly for you to bring out product. They want you to develop product and bring it out to the market. So you go here, you say you want to, you want to look into a mechanism of cancer, how cancer infects and works. They will TKO your application. Okay, and if you, you can just go into Ministry of Health, go in login. When you can have a look at the form, more than fifty percent of the form are asking you how you can bring the product to the market. What is your market research, market plan, and so on. So, you see, that's why I say, previously you have small data, then you apply for a grant. Can you apply for a grant now like this? No. We must show that where you want to go. So this is the new way of grant application is moving towards. And not just Malaysia, Throughout the world, that's how, that, that is where they, they are moving forward. Okay. So these are the research university grants, which is much more smaller, which allows for young people to work. Like all these grants, you look here. These are are you team? So which one I said that I had? Are you trans? Are, are you top down? Okay. All of this is the. Uh, if you go to USM RCMO and you, you click internal grant, you can find this and you click, can, can click each one to know what is that, okay? So this, this is what the team trans. Are you top down means they give you a topic. They want on this and you have to work or write something on that. If, you are, if it is not on your field, then you can apply. 
if they say there's something on social funds, on um, new policy and guideline, can I go in the club? I don't have anything, I don't know anything about policy and guideline. Okay, I'm a PhD or something on that, so I cannot. So, this RUI is RU individual, so they have for, you see, Apex Young Scholar. This is for the new scholars, new people. Short term grant, I cannot apply because I am an associate professor. Associate professor, I cannot apply this. You see, they have barriers. And professors, they cannot apply anything of this. All the professors cannot apply, listens, the university grants. They must go outside. This is for people, the university want to give money for young people to do something and to come out. So that they can, after they have what? Track record. They have publication, they have students, they have ability to show that they have good financial funding. Then they can go out and apply for bigger grants. Okay, for the ministry grants. Without this, even ministry grants, they will say no track record. As I say, I'm, I'm evaluator. We need to look into that. When somebody very young is applying, very fresh applying for ministry grant, and he haven't got any internal grants, he did that. Because people have no track record. How can we give a bigger grant when we don't know how the people will manage? As I say, same thing for loan. Okay? So then this bridging grant is much more smaller. Okay? But it helps you to bridge your research. So that you can apply short term or you can apply RU. Got it? So the applying grant is not as easy as I, I take a form, I write in everything, so oh, mine is going to be fantastic. Summit, you ask for 500,000, people give you 500,000. Forget about it. Okay. We can ask for five hundred thousand. They might they only give you eighty thousand. Okay, because you just people there who are evaluating it. When you put in budget, they tell teach you how to do budgeting. People know because they understand how much this will cost. Uh, okay. Like fifteen years ago when I started. Okay. I start, my started my job in 2009, long ago. Okay. So when I started, when I applied for grant, I don't have to give any quotations. I don't have to get quotation from company and so on. But now, for each and every, you need to itemize. I can just put sell here, put 5,000, 10,000. But now you have to put what sentence you need You have to specify, you have to itemize. And you have to provide quotations for that from different companies to show that that is their actual price. Okay, let's go. So now then you have grant from corporations and industry. As I said, this is much more difficult. But if you can tell me, it's good. Why it's good? Because you must go, you cannot go to Microsoft and apply for, apply for what? Diagnostic, therapeutic. For what Microsoft wants diagnostic and therapeutic? But, my, but they have Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which mainly fund HIV, TB, malaria work. They heavily fund HIV work. So you can go and apply that foundation which they have created. But you cannot go to Microsoft company and ask him money, oh, this belongs to Bill Gates, he's funding that, you give me yet. So cannot. This, this is a different entity. So when you want to go somewhere and get industries, is for you to solve their problem, not your problem. Okay? And a lot of international grants are available. Okay, all of these are very big, big prestigious grants. Like Newton Kuoma Fund is a special fund between Malaysia and UK. So Malaysian researcher and UK researcher must apply together. Very prestigious, 
and very little data. Then you, 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 let's say now, I cannot say that, oh, I know Saad, Saad, after this, Saad is going to work in UK. Then I say, okay, Saad said, okay, let me, you told me about Newton and Puma, can we apply this time? I mean, UK, you are in Malaysia, they apply together. And we should be getting it, no. We should have a track record like first. We must show that we have worked together first. How we show that we have worked together? Either that we have applied for other grants together and we have got it. We must show joint publication for that kind of project that we have worked. Then only we can apply with the book for more. So, if you want to apply for this, if I want to apply for this, I must start my work now and build the relationship, publish something even after three years later, maybe I might can apply to go on. So why I'm telling you this is that before you want to go and apply for a grant, what must you look for? NJ degree. Same thing, you applied for masters in which more you look for. What is your eligibility? You do engineering in civil, engineering in between. You have to have at least background in science. Preferably biological science. We still taking people with chemistry. Okay? Why? Because they can learn. We we use biochemistry work a lot. Okay, they could it could improve themselves. But we don't take people from physics yet. <laughs> okay? Unless they can show that they are from nuclear medicine. Yeah. Understand? So, if this is not easy. So, you see, Southeast Asian, Europe, joint funding, TUAS, okay? TUAS is, is another thing that uh, mainly support a lot of African countries, okay? So, you can get that. So, all funding agencies, you see, receive thousands of applications for each application received grant. Funding on the first attempt is difficult but not important. As I say, you must know what is the criteria for funding. Okay, let's say now we, uh, we are waiting for fundamental research grants. It was open end of last year. We thought of life, as I told you, if I'm not mistaken, it was about 11,000 plus application. Okay, all, all the fields, it's not just science or health and medicine. We have science, health and medicine, engineering, environment, social science, business, management. So, consists of everything is by 9,000 or more application. But they, they will only usually fund 10 to 15 percent of all this application. So, if you have 10,000 application, it's only about 1,000 people who can get funded. So, when 1,000 people are going to get funded, so how good your grant proposal has to be? How robust, how strong, and how convincing that it will work? And what I'm saying is true, and it will work. If it works, it benefits all of you. Okay? So, how grant fits in the research program for the researcher? How does it fit? Okay, grant application from one part of a planned research program. So, you already have an idea. Okay, let's say, uh, cannot say something very technical. Okay. You already have an idea now that you want to make an handphone, okay, that is in the watch. Now it's only that, okay, so you want to make a handphone, you don't have to use handphone anymore, it's just your watch, it's your handphone, okay, there are a lot of things, so big, so how do you want to function here, you see, you are using it now. So if you want to type something, okay, you just click it, 
Tidak lupa ngasih kolumen Tidak You saw people like that, people like show in films It's not something new that I'm telling you Okay, but what I'm telling you so that you can understand And then, kolumen, then you type Click, 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 then send, finish Oh, you see that is difficult What? Now press, you talk it recognizes, it changes to text and send. Even emails. So that is convenient, right? So that is your plan. But now how do you want to bring this big inside this small? That is your research plan. First is developing a chip which is one nanometer size. So you ask for fund that funding first. Without that, how we can convert? So when you have your research program, a program means big. So masters in molecular medicine is a program. So when you want to complete the program, what do you take? You take 501, you take 502. Can you take 508 before 501, 501? Cannot. So, one by one. Okay? They may complement existing research project as a separate or distinct effort. What do you mean? What currently that you have? It will complement. That's how it works. Or, you say that, I'm using this method, but this research, what I'm doing, is on changing the phone in to the watch. Now my watch is my handphone. So using the same concept, now I'm going to miniaturize laptops. So laptops is going to be like phone. So you just place like this. When you on it, you can get how big screen that you want because it is projecting somewhere. And then there's a hologram keypad. So everyone now could print the laptop like in pocket. No, don't, don't have to carry a laptop bag. Don't have to go and find a big charger. That's it. The same concept. One, meet, one nanometer chip. So that what being a distinct effort. But the concept, the idea is the same. You can use PCR to detect cancer. You can use PCR to detect active spiral, salmonella. Okay. Each application and project may be stepping stone for the next. That is always what it's about. Having decided to make a grant application, they require a systematic approach, as I say. A systematic approach is needed where you start, where you end. So when you end, when you, okay, it's here, it's a stop, complete. So what is the ROI? What is the return of investment? Two publications, one master's students, one copyright, or one IP, one patent, or one commercial product, five publications, anything. Then what the funding agency wants. If the funding agency say one pay, one publication, you don't go in from each ten publication. The funding agency is happy, and they will they will write it down in your because once you get, they say okay you got it. You don't simply think they give you money. You sign an agreement with them. It's an official stamped legal document because they give you public funding, especially government one, public money. So you, you need to sign an agreement. In that agreement, they will state that your deliverables is 10 obligation. So when you don't deliver 10, what does it show? Your KPI not achieved. But what the funding re request? FRGS only requests two obligations. So why you have to put 10? When you get three or four, it's bonus. It shows that you are doing more than what you promised. Okay? They can be seen as integral part of research professional responsibility. That is your, well, my professional responsibility. So 
whatever I promise I must deliver. So this is also my professional responsibility. I need to teach you properly, right? I can come in class, I can finish this lecture in half an hour saying that just cut short everything. So then what what is the point? So everyone has their professional responsibility. Okay. They are part of research professional growth and strategies too. Build credentials. Whose credential? Your credential. Establish track record of funding. Whose? Yours. Work on team with more experienced researchers. You. Why? Because you will have more networking, more expertise, you understand things better. I cannot do. As I said, the RU team project, I am the, pro I'm the program leader. I lead the whole program. But I don't know anything about how to go and do questionnaires to analyze patients' attitude and behavior towards towards the towards treatment. So they are health social scientists. They know it. So I need to work with them. And we need to tell what our idea is. And when they fit in, they do the work. I cannot go and analyze what is the financial burden of the hospital. How can I do the analysis? They, they do very minded. They take anticipation and they look into how much is being spent on anticipation from medication, from the time of the nurse being spent, the amount and time they are in the hospital, the big charges, everything they look in because that is their thing, finance. Okay? Are a part of long range personal development. Without grant, all the researches are dead. We can lose our job. Let's say that I don't have any funding for three years. Okay? I can lose my job. Don't look at it that. It is true. Okay? It is true because when I don't have funding, I don't have masters and PhDs. And I'm not in school of biology or school of chemistry. I'm a research institute. My KPI goes research is hard. So they might give me a chance for up to three years. So my KPI drops, my marks drops, and I might get a termination letter. So you see? No, what I'm telling you is not story. It's the truth that we have to at least keep one active ground constantly running. Okay? So background, approaching ground application. Each grant agency set its own priority for research and educational programs. What I mean educational programs is that they are also grant funding that they give, like, like what I do okay, for biosafety awareness. Okay, I think I've told you before that I'm the president of Nation Biosafety Biosafety Association. Okay, so we do a lot of awareness for biosafety and biosecurity. So we get funding for educational programs. So through the association, we ask for funding. And government gives us funding, international body gives us funding to educate more people on the awareness of biosafety. And we do a lot of trainings. Even we do now on cyber biosecurity training. Yeah, your data, you, you, are, you are sequencing your genes. Okay? You are sequencing your bacterial gene. And then you are having it that and you're telling that this part of the gene is very virulent. If somebody take it, clone it, and give it, there's another pandemic coming in. So that is much more difficult, okay? Uh, may have specific areas to award funding application to. The research has his or her own interest, the researcher. You have your own interests. Okay? Often it is a matter of fund finding where they intersect. Okay, my main interest is in cancer. 
okay, looking into the diagnostics and therapeutics of cancer, and specifically cervical cancer. So when the funding agency opens up, they say, okay, we are giving now for communicable disease. What is communicable disease? Infectious. Can I apply? If I want to apply, I need to bring it to infectious. How can I convert my cancer to infectious? I'm working on cervical cancer. It, it, it is caught by human papillomavirus, which is infectious. So I need to treat and turn and write it in that way. And I need to convince them if I still want to work with cervical cancer, which is could be infectious. Sorry, it is infectious. Okay? But if not, I don't have any grant. I need money. So I need to use the knowledge that I have on molecular biology and write a grant on the infections. This is survival. Okay? What I'm what I'm telling you is the actual fact. So as I need to survive, you need to do that. You cannot be saying that I will wait for 10 years until there's an opening for survival cancer specialty. So what will happen to you? You lose your job. Okay? Often you have to modify your research proposal area to match the interest of the grant agency. <coughs> if not, you don't get it. <coughs> research interest plus grant agency plus the proposal that you have is a proper grant. Okay? So you must see what is the research interest in this. Okay, so how you want to approach grant agency vary in the information they require. They, have, they might require different, different information. Basic information such as name, address, contact details, present occupation, present employer, CV, information about the educational background is often needed. Okay, later when you do a research project, I will share with you the uh, application, the USM application. So you will see that, okay? A statement of purpose or objective for study and a rational is often required. So you need to have your objective and rational of your study. Why you need to do the study? So which means that you need to have a problem. So you need to have a problem statement. And then you need to say that oh, this would be the solution for the problem. So that is your rationalization. Sorry. Yeah. So, if the project is MSc mixed mode molecular medicine that we follow, which all of your project, so what is your rationale of the study? So now you are applying for a funding with your parents. Okay, all of you are with your parents. You you apply. With yourself, so you stand inside in front of the mirror, you ask yourself, okay, so what is the rational of all of you when to come to Kumfong to study master's mixed mode? So how you defend yourself with your parents saying that fund me? Go ahead, Chama. I and being able to do it and I had a staff so I had to uh, just write a master's degree. Yeah, so that is a rational. So that rational is valid for somebody to give you money to, to go and do it. So if somebody asks you what is your rational, so I don't know what to do at all. So I just thought of going to do master's in next month. Oh, true. Like, business. Yeah, yeah. Some people. So when you put that, your parents is fine. They say rather than you sit at home and if you go and get it, they pay for you. But if a scholarship, if somebody is giving you scholarship, and you go and sit for an interview, and they ask you why we should fund you to do, to go for studies and abroad, 
We say, no, I don't have, I'm just sleeping at home. No. <laughs> no, you don't get it because you are not rationalizing your what? Rationalizing your what? Your objective for you to go to study. So you, you can have objective. Oh, I want to go out. What is rationalizing? No. And suddenly you go and say that now, when you go back, shut up. Okay, you want to go and do your PhD in UK. Okay? Or in the US. So you sit in front of the, all your deans and professors there. They say, okay, so what is the purpose? Why, 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 why should I be sending you to UK? No, I've been to Malaysia, it's hot. Now I want to go to UK, it's cold. <laughs> Can everyone ask? <laughs> but if you tell the answer, you don't get funding. Because you're not rationalizing the objective of you going to UK for that cost. You're rationalizing your comfort. Okay, you see? So, purpose, objective, and rational is very, very important for you to be done. So, if you cannot give a rationalization, we read the problem statement. And if you couldn't find a proper problem statement and rational of the project, we say no way nothing. Okay, and your objective has to meet your title and the problem. How your objective is going to help to solve the problem. So it's not just writing, putting, getting. Same thing, it's like saying you're going sitting for an interview to interview to get a job, interview to get. So why they should give you the job? It's only one opening. 30 people is there. Why should they give it to you, not him or her? It's difficult. Okay. So the background context, related research literature review you need to have, Description of how the study is being carried out should be there. Significant of the study, why it is so significant that you need to do. And resources needed, what are the resources that you need. And benefit of the study, I put here, don't exaggerate. People write, oh, this thing is going to be that good, this good, this good. No, the expert knows it's not. Okay? So usually, you know, who do this lot of exaggeration? All this new uh, applying for the first time, second time. They want to show that all is good, is good. But the expert who sits there, they have been there for donkey years and looking at this. They know whatever that you are doing is not right. Okay? Same thing. When you give me your assignment, okay, then you, when you give us your assignment, when we read, we know that whether you are writing yourself or you are this. Because we have read so much that we really so we know that this is from articles, we just can't pay it fully to the world and then send it to us, or we have read it on your own. From the words, certain words which have been used. So we know that it's not. Okay? So that people who sit there for very long, like the Higgs, they are their professors who are going to retire already. So how much experience they have. And some of them are being called back just to review. Even though they are retired, they are called back. So before Raya, I went for PR, PRGS. I applied for PRGS. So PRGS run, they will evaluate. Once they will evaluate, they will short this. After they short this, you need to go and present. Defend yourself and they ask you question. There are 11 of them in front of me. Not one, not two. 11. Okay. And they will ask you questions and you have to answer. And all of them, I think more than half of them I know, and three of them already retired. They are back here sitting down, helping out other people so that they could really give the fund to people who really need it. For really good help. Okay, so don't exaggerate, don't overshoot saying something that just you read in Google somewhere. It has to be facts and figures. Okay? So, background question to approach a grant application with. So,
when you want to approach a clarification with what you want to do, is there an underlying legislative purpose for the grant organization? Which means that when uh, when a people want to give you a grant, you need to see that what is their rules and regulation, legislative, what they have, what is their term of reference. We call it EOR. So if it is there, like the government funding that I showed you, it's there. Go and download. They say these are the criteria. These are the term of reference. So you must go and read that first. Is there a background statement from the grant organization of national need? Which means that okay, this grant opening, like during COVID, the grant opening is for COVID only. Any research during COVID they give you. Not they give you simply. <laughs> Which means that it's only for research that is based on COVID, special COVID. Okay. Is the background statement and rationale of the grant organization appropriately researched and referenced? Which means that when you are writing, they want to do it for COVID or the, of the current one or obesity now. So have you? done the background statement rationale of the grant organization appropriately research if you research that what they actually want so they can say it's for covid but we go down and read the term of reference okay when I, when they open up covid one when we read term of reference they only want to fund two research one vaccine development another one sequencing of space so they don't want you to go and develop diagnostic kit. So you saw this, you didn't read their purpose, their background statement, and you go and write that you want to develop a biosensor and submit. They don't even read, they throw. Because they want it for vaccine. Okay? Is a research project appropriate, innovative, and effective? If you are going to repeat someone you have already done, forget about it. What are the objectives of your project? You need to spell it out correctly. What are the project objectives? Are project objectives concisely stated? What do you mean concise? In a line, concise. In a paragraph, not concise. So it has to be concise. Okay? Is the research measurable? So your research has to be measurable in some way. If not, how I know that you have achieved it? Okay. I I okay. Now this thing is the term happiness index. Okay. So you said that you want to do a research to check whether that people are happy or not. So you said you want to do questionnaires. Fine, good. So so how do you evaluate your questionnaires? So. There should be a linked scale. Because for any questionnaires, the measurable term they use linked scale. 1 to 10, then you calculate. That is good. But you say that I'm only going to do specialized now, only interview. I'm going to interview people and see whether they have been or not. How can you have to scale your interview question? No. I will give happy or not happy. <laughs> so that's the measurable. So everything has to have something that could be measurable. Uh, the project goals and term of reference is clearly achievable. Can you achieve it? Okay. Can you achieve it? Yeah, coming to doing masters, finishing up, it's achievable. Okay. Don't go to your parents and say that, okay, give me money, tomorrow I want to hike up more networks. Achievable to any of you? No, because you are not trained. You cannot do it tomorrow. Maybe in one year time, yes. Because you are preparing yourself for that. Can you can you go in tomorrow? If I give you money tomorrow, go and hike up. Go to the peak of Mount Everest. Excited, you go, you might not come back. Okay? So is the methodology integrated and compatible with the objective? See, the methodology is integrated and compatible with the objective. 
So you write the objective. Let me put it. Okay, you write the objective. Your first objective uh, on the complete master series form. Part. Okay. So you, your your methodology find where masters in which mode for molecular medicine is available throughout the world. So and then go there complete. Good. Okay. So what is your methodology now? You need to search where it is and so on. Okay. But does your objective is specific? Why? Because, like for Sana, the scholarship, one year, is only about 20,000 USD. Okay? If you're going to live in the UK, the fees itself is 20,000 USD. Then how you can spend money to eat and stay? So, the objective is not profitable already. So now, the objective has to be find somewhere which is the cost of living plus the educational fee would be 20,000 or below USD per year. That is correct. Understand? Okay? So what is the budget justification? So as I said, you ask for 500,000. So you need to justify for the 500,000. As I said, you need to itemize how many you want to buy. So you have 10, one cell. You're only going to culture one cell. And you're asking that you need to buy 100 bottles of India. But you're saying that you want to culture one cell. But you need to do large scale culturing so that because we can extract. And put it there. How much large scale? Each time 10 liters. Then you ask for 100 bottles of India. It's fine. Understand? It has to be fitting into compatible. Huh? Have you drawn up a project management plan? So, what is project management plan? I'm asking every day. You want to come to most of my classes in the morning. So, what is your project management plan for you to come to my class? I think today Sana failed that. Why? Because she said haven't set an alarm that she has to wake up at eight. <laughs> but you didn't wake up. <laughs> No, no, but so that's the project plan. So where you need to start and what you need to do step by step. Okay. So I think before I go this, I don't know what's what the first slide is this. Oh, slide sixteen. Talking too much. I have thirty-seven slides. <laughs> ah, I need to go a bit faster. Can okay, I give you a five minutes break? Our class is until 12, right? So I give you all five minutes by you break. So go ahead, come back. We have one more to catch up. Make sure I don't talk a lot.
Social Security doesn't Okay, so so here I'm going to put selecting a funding agency. So as I say, they are you you actually you can select which agency that you want to apply for. You know, because there are a lot of different agencies will give you fund, like government, community trust, prize awards, scholarship, private contracts, or anything. Okay, but it has to work in line with what the agency wants okay develop knowledge of the funding source so what they want what they want to fund for 
so that we don't apply wrongly. Find the information that you need to know from funding agency. Usually their websites, their data, their email, everything is there. Check purpose of the funding. So what is the purpose of the funding? Is the purpose of the funding to create awareness and to give like lectures and classes. You cannot be applying for funding that you want to do research on that. So you must know what is the purpose of the funding is for. Closing date for receiving the application is very important. Like they say the closing date is 30th April, don't be submitting it on before 30th of May. And then write an email, oh I forgot, uh, I, I overlooked it. They don't entertain anything like that. Worldwide. No entertainment at all. Usually, previously it is like uh, very long ago, everything was hard copy. Okay, you key in everything, you print, you go and submit. So when when the RCMO says that it is at five p.m. on Friday, it's the last day. Okay, five p.m. on Friday is the last day. Plus, you need to submit. Okay, but I personally know the person who is receiving. I talk to them, I call them up, I say that they give me some time. Because Friday, 5 p.m., Saturday, Sunday, no one works. So I say, by Monday morning, first thing I'll give it to you. Okay? That was feasible way back, long ago. Why nowadays it's not feasible? Why? Online. And you need to upload everything in the system. Friday, 5 o'clock, the system shut down. You cannot upload anything. Okay? Don't be overthinking. You cannot do anything. Same thing when we give you assignments and everything, when we lock, locked. When we say 11.59 p.m., you want to go in 12.00. Locked. Or you want to go in 11.59.01. One second extra. Locked. Okay? So consider that length of consideration process, how long does it take? So let, like I told you, the FRG is done. We apply it end of March day. Usually the news comes in May or June. That is the time frame that you have to understand that how long does it for them to take to come up with an answer later. The form and the duration of the grant takes. Okay, you see seeding grant, project grant, targeted grant, consultancy and scholarship. All of it have a different form and different duration. Okay, so like seeding grant means it's a seed fund they give you. Usually it's six months or one year. You cannot be applying seed funds for three years. They will reject. So you need to understand. Application procedure condition under which grants are made. So what are the application procedure? Certain grants, they ask you to submit a summary first. A 500 word summary of what you want to do, everything. Okay? The problem statement, the objective and everything is summarized and you need to send them in 500 words. And they go through that. If the funding agency feel your project fits into their scope, they will notify you to submit in the full proposal. If not, they will say thank you. So you must know how. It's not all of it you need to put it in the full proposal. And different grants have a different proposal type that they want. Okay? Accountability for money, report on progress, termination, condition, acknowledgement of funding agency in publication, everything you need to know. Okay? So most of the funding agencies, they will ask you to acknowledge their name. So when you, when you read the journal, there is part acknowledgement. They say it is funded by who and who. So clarify ownership of data and results. Usually when the government one, if the government funded, the data is owned by the 
unique, not not you. Okay, the data and everything is owned by the unique. So when you apply for IP, it is between you and the USP, okay, of the agency that you work for. But if you are going for private for industries, this one has to be spelled out. And they give you money, they say the data belongs to me, not you. Okay. So now you need to look whether your grant topic matches. Identify your topic area. Develop a list of potential funding agencies. Evaluate the resources that you can get. Narrow your research interests so that you can fit into the scope. Write an abstract or contract paper. An abstract that what you wanted to do. What organizational support is there? So how how that your organization can support you, like USM or Inform. So RMC research management team director external peer review. Which means that you give it to your friends, asking them to look. Hey, I want to apply for this. This is the idea that I have. Does it fit? Okay. Be prepared to reshape ideas based on the conversation. Be prepared to write several drafts. Doesn't mean that I can write one perfect summit will get. It. Okay, work collaboratively where it is possible, and when you want to construct an application framework, each body has its own criteria. Each funding body. Ask what will your research add to overall body of knowledge. So for the knowledge, so can what does it will do? What are the research questions to be addressed or problem explored in the course of research? So you must have research questions. So these are the research questions and how you are going to answer them. So who's going to answer your research question? Your objectives. This is the method. So your objective will answer the research question, and your objective will be achieved using the method. Understand that? Okay. So what are the objectives in terms of answering the hypothesis? So you write a hypothesis. And you write the objective, but doesn't tell you. So can you? Can I give you the grant? No. So what is the research context? Why it is important for these questions to be answered? Okay. Will the research confirm that we know already? Will it depend on our understanding? Will it invalidate existing evidence or interpretation? Or substitution of a new paradigm. What does it mean that now I'm saying that driving a manual car is the best and the safest way because you are in control. But now you are going to do research saying that what I've said is wrong. So that is invalidating the existing evidence. So whatever that I'm saying is wrong. So how are you going to prove that? Okay, or you are going to find a new way. You are going to say that no, but I'm not saying that is wrong. But using an automatic car is safer than using the manual. You are not invalidating. Sorry, in invalidate. You are you are not saying that that is wrong, but you are saying that this is better. Hmm? We didn't provide practical application to the knowledge or what other research has been done in the area. So you cannot be repeating whatever people have done. We won't fund you. So, so when you want to have a proper checklist, so what is your project about? You must know what is your project is about. Why it is important. What will you do? What will you do? Get the money, go and buy a car. So what will you do is your method. 
to achieve that. So what are the objectives? How will you do it? How? So you have your gun chart, when and so on. Okay? What will it cost? That is your budget. What will it cost? What it does? What will it cost the budget? And when you write the budget and with all the material, please carry. I think I need to reword that. Now we will get confused, okay? So why are you the best person or the team to do it? Why do you give it to me? Why shouldn't I give it to someone else? I only have one million to give this, this cycle. Okay? So I can only fund 10 projects. Each project 100,000. Okay, but there's 1,000 application. So why should I give it to you? That is the toughest part that how we want to answer. And so you should be good and we should have a lot of things. Okay? So what are the key considerations here? Aside from basic idea, methodology, dissemination strategies are the most important aspect for your grant. So how you strategize the, what is your methodology, right? So how you want to disseminate that? How you want to do it? And how you are proving it step by step? Okay? At the end of the day, it is the validation. You do, 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 okay, I got it. So what you got is quite wrong. If I put that question there, okay? So let's say that you got it. Oh, I can drive. A lot of people can drive. But are you driving safely? And are you driving by following the rules? Okay, so that is the important part. So when you strategize it, when you write it down correctly, and you show that once you get your result and you're validating it using the current proper validation method to confirm it, then you have high chance of getting it. Because you are proving yourself that you are knowledgeable in the field, you know what you are doing. And if not, no. Okay? So you see, follow research funders' guidelines for application. If you don't follow their guideline, bye-bye. Okay? If it says set up your research methodology in detail, do not write in brief. And they say that do write properly and you just write one line according as per SANA at all 2024. Bye bye. Okay? Is the methodology feasible? Okay. You, you say that. Do you know do you know what a synchrotron is? Okay, synchrotron is a very big instrument. Okay? It's a very big instrument. The radius is in kilometers. How the proton moves. Okay, that's a synchrotron. Okay? Malaysia don't have a synchrotron. No. The, 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 the nearest that you can go is Taiwan. Right? Okay? So you are do you are writing a methodology using synchrotron to identify a novel protein structure. Okay? To identify a novel protein structure. So can you is it feasible and you're doing it in Malaysia? And you are saying that you're putting the location is in Do You think people don't know? Okay? You didn't put uh, your partner, the Academia Sindica of Taiwan, or UK, or US. If you don't put that, it's not feasible for you to do the work. The <coughs> methodology is not feasible because you don't even have the instrument. Okay? Have a strategy for handling problems and setbacks. Pay attention 
to the aim of research funders grant bodies one different things look for clues as they are requirement be literal in your response to them okay how do you look for clues so when you read their guidelines and everything and then sometimes these big big grants they have talks they have people who comes and uh, do online talks saying that what they did now and they also do talks of people who have managed to get the grant so how they have prepared their proposal how they managed to secure the grant so going look into that listen to whatever people has to say because they are born to the cycle and sometimes the reviewer of the grant will come and give you a talk how they are what they are looking for and do not do this mistakes uh, so that is the important part okay increasingly you need to justify the findings to all the audience focus on main themes make research accessible and useful apply and practice okay don't be saying that okay, you you are using instrument a and the research only can be done with the instrument b it is specialized and then you are using instrument a and you are buying the kit only compatible to the instrument b is very difficult to get money because you are locking it to one system so when you, when you lock your things to one system that how other people could be they they not going find that and right that thing to do so it be as be as open as possible for people to do it okay can okay, include imaginative way of creating the research this case research is not just for other academics make the research available to other user groups industry want to use the data okay other researchers in agencies want to use your data so it's not just for trying to find a new mechanism or new thing that people want to use people are looking now for things that would enhance and improve people's well-being in all the sense okay generally those just out of phd will be more suited for small grants don't apply unless you have a clear idea in your head okay i've gone through that so i think oh i want to write this like that and this like that okay so my my when i did in 2009 when i joined in end of 2009 i got a grant because that idea was given by a professor and she has an idea so i'm as i'm doing that part and i write the grant she checked it applied to it the grant that i applied on my own saying that oh i already got one grant right so now i'm big i want to apply for fps yes yeah. and i applied and there, there, there is internal committee in USN looks it before we sign out to the ministry. Literally all the part that I wrote, all were comments. I'm not trying to tell that. Just we think that, oh, no. All were comments. This one has to be corrected, that one has to be corrected. I corrected everything. And then somebody came and even get the one. Then I went and sat for all these talks, lectures and everything and going to meet people who have already got the grant, how they got it. Or they say, oh, you shouldn't be doing this. If you write like this, you won't get. Because they have gone through the cycle. Somebody told them, some reviewers told them. Again, nothing has been written. There is no written guideline book, do's and don'ts of the grant. There, there are some common things like what I'm telling you. Because each grant agency, each funder, have their own do's and don'ts. So you cannot be writing everything. So but you need to go and talk to the person. Like you need to go and talk to a reviewer who's reviewing grants in, in, in the ministry. So during that time there are few professors. They are there reviewers when they sat with them, talk, they explain 
Then I read you submit again in 2011. Didn't get it. Oh, quite comments here and there. Then submit again in 2012. Go ahead. You see, that is the cycle that everyone has to go. Okay. Grant application can take a long time to finish. Prepare to have your application bounced. Only about 5% are able to fail. Okay. So, contact checklist are the goal, objective, aims are clearly defined. Why I'm telling you this? Because this is going to be a project paper on applying the grant based on your final year project that you're going to do. Okay, so whatever I tell you here, I need it to be inside the proposal that you're going to write. Okay, and then it's page 5, mark 2. Okay. Okay, there is 25 marks. So do the objective taken together define the goal of the study? Are the aims written concise? And, te and testable statement. The aim and the objective are the same. Concise has to be concise, and you can test it. So when, whenever I say something that can be tested and can be proved, okay. So if I say this, this container could be filled with acid. My statement is right or wrong. It's wrong. What? Wrong. Hmm? It's wrong. Wrong. Yeah, I think why my statement was wrong. My statement was the container can be filled with acid. So, that's what big acid is. Can or cannot? Can. That's what big acid is your vitamin C. So is my statement my statement is correct, but my statement is not complete. You see, that is your aim and objective. It has to be precise and concise. I must tell that this container could be filled with 0 0.5 molar of phosphoric acid. Fine. 0 0.5 molar, nothing is going to happen. Even though it's plastic. But if my statement is this container can be filled with 10 molar of sulfuric acid. Wrong. Yes. This will be granted. This is plastic. So the aim written as concise and testable treatment. So even though it's correct, but you can pause zero point five and type, nothing happens to it. Okay. Are the key concepts are defined? Does the hypothesis when tested address the aim of the study? So when you have a hypothesis, then it's being tested using the method and it has to answer the aim of the study. Okay, yeah? again, uh, aim and objective is the same. Okay, sorry because sometimes I write aim, sometimes I write objective. Both are the same. It's aim slash objective. Okay, you see? Goals, objectives, aims are the same. Don't get confused. Eh? Are the dependent, independent objective operationally defined? These are the variables. Okay, you learned in science, maybe in your primary school. Still remember the variables? No. Constant variable. Responding variable. Oh. Okay. So they are they are variable. So in this room. Okay, so in this room now when I say I'm going to test the conduciveness of study ground application. So what is the constant variable? Things that don't change. 
what? Sides of the room, lighting, tables, chairs, if you sit, it doesn't change. Okay? What is the responding variable? Conducivity, right? Conducivity of learning. So, what is the responding variable? Temperature. The off the icon, is it conducive? The on the icon, I make it too cold, is it conducive? That thing which change. Same thing like me. I'm standing here. I'm just sleeping at there. And I'm, when I'm talking also, you can't hear me properly. Is it conducive for you to learn? So these are the responding variables. The variables that respond to the A. Okay? So same thing here, dependent and independent. Something that is dependent, something that be very independent objective. So is the terminology used for definition clear? And unambiguous. It cannot be ambiguous. Eh? Uh, hypothesis objective stated in reasonable term. As I said, you cannot be saying something unreasonable. Okay? So now they are saying that phone could snap a picture of the moon. What they are saying is threat. You can zoom and see the moon and snap a picture. They doesn't say that you can see the sign on the moon. Okay? So it cannot be, it has to be re in a reasonable terms. Okay? You cannot, you cannot be saying that the American flag is flying there. Are the hypothesis objective based on sound theory? So, your hypothesis and objective that you are coming up are based on a proper theory that is already available. Okay? You are saying that now, so to develop a diagnostic, you can do PCR, you can do QPCR, you can do deep state, you can do biosensor. Now you are coming up with an idea saying that with a drop of blood, when I take a picture and I can get the reading of whether that is a person the glucose content. Or just put the finger, scan, I can get the glucose content. So does the theory work? Is it the sound theory? Because how can you detect the glucose content just by taking a picture of the finger? But unless the camera has the ability to scan through the blur and think something like that, I don't know, a laser camera or something, then it can. Okay? So it has to be the sound. A proven a sound theory means a proven theory. Okay? A hypothesis objective stated as measurable ideas. It has something measurable as I keep on telling you. Do the hypothesis clearly predict a relationship between variables? So you see, the hypothesis clearly predict relationship between variables. So when you have variables, constants and responding variables, so both must work together. Okay. So for a conducive way of learning, can I give you a sofa bed? I, 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 we remove all the tables, chairs, we put all sofa mates or bean bags. So what is going to happen? You are going to sleep. I am going to talk about it. <laughs> that is very, very comfortable. But it doesn't tally to the hypothesis. The hypothesis is conducive learning. You must learn. That is conducive but you are sleeping. Okay. Okay. So you see necessary conceptual elements. So what are the conceptual elements that is very very necessary when you are applying for the grant, which is an innovative idea of approach. When I want to give you money, you do something. Do something with you. Okay. You cannot be doing what people have done. I give you money for anything else. Okay, a significant question must be there for you to answer. And then familiarize it with other 
work in the field. So you must know that now, as I say, I want to develop and watch, which is now an handbook. Okay? But am I familiar with other work? What work? As I say, the chip. The chip has to be small. The motherboard. The motherboard has to be small. So who's going to fabricate for me the chip and the motherboard? Where I'm going to do it? Whether the technology is available or not. The current technology that is available is only 3 nanometer chip. But what I want is the 1 nanometer chip. Do I have the technology to do it? Or who's going to do it for us? For me? All other things, okay? A clear statement of research question. A theoretical framework of what you're going to do. A methodology which matches the research question. A clear understanding of method. If you don't understand the method that you are going to do, then how are you, how you expect me to fund you? Okay? The first thing I ask you that what is the requirement for you to enter info after office hours? So after office hours, all the doors are closed. So how can you enter info? For, for your night classes, how you enter info? Excess time. Okay? So if you don't know that you need an access card to enter info of the office also, how can you come and learn? So your methodology is already wrong. You don't you don't understand your method of access. So how can I fund you? Something okay? A vision for use or for benefit of the research. So how that you vision that this research would benefit other researchers or other research or other people. Does the project act significantly to the present knowledge? So there's already knowledge there. Are you repeating it or are you adding it? So you should always add it. Then when it's new, improve the way of doing things, provide ways to use fewer resources without loss of efficiency or efficacy. So for now, you see, uh, for now, like you want to test COVID, the gold standard is QPCR. It's expensive. It costs you about 200 ringgit per test, including all the courses. Okay? So now you're saying that you are going to develop a biosensor chip, okay? which is as efficient as the Q QPCR, but it's going to cost 500 ringgit per can I fund you? I won't fund you. Because you, you, on what is already currently is 200 and you want to do it something new for 500. For what? And the current one, QPCR, is the gold standard. And what you are doing is always the same. You are not doing something very superior so that I am willing to pay extra. Understand? Mm -hmm. If you're going to do a biosensor which is comparable and it's going to cost you 10 ringgit per street, people will fund Because they don't have to go and spend 200 ringgit anymore. So it's bringing down the cost of people. Okay? So, content checklist, whether you have title, you have abstract, introduction and background, goal, objective, specific aims, significant, importance, problem statement. Okay, literature review, methodology, gun chart. So if you all have done your proposal or not? No. Research proposal? No, no just start. Yeah, just start there. All of you are taking TRX 500. Good. So you need that, you need your gun chart in, you need your milestone, investigative team credential, qualification and research history, what does it mean that who's your in your team? You? For, for now, for now, it's you, your supervisor, or some seniors that are helping you out, definitely. So three people, or two seniors help you out, or PhD or master's or something. So that's your thing. 
budget no budget we simply use now right but in your project paper you need to include your budget you need to talk to your seniors how to find that what material that you need and how much each material would cost you try to get quotations for that okay you have enough time to do your paper okay a 25 marks paper to be and references you cannot simply write proposal without any references can you write proposal without any references so appendix materials if you have appendices sometimes you need sometimes you don't need like i'm saying that okay i already have all this preliminary data so i put when i write i put my data as i said i already have and i have to put in appendix 1 as per in appendix 1 in appendix 2 so i put all my data okay so that people could refer okay guideline for statement of projects are the method activities are related to the objective and keep on repeating this you see for you, for you to get an understanding and keep on repeating because this is the main thing when you write a proposal or a grant proposal both are same research proposal and grant proposal both are same research proposal you don't have budget grant proposal you have budget itself so are the method or activities clearly related to the objective of the project if it doesn't relate to objective the project, no, it's wrong. Okay. Are the method activities to accomplish the objective clearly stated? Okay. So you clearly stated. Do you have letter of support? What I mean by letter of support? If you're going to work from someone, if you're going to do a work with someone else. Like now we have I found that. We all know I found right. Okay, so you need to do some work at the animal facility at IFARM. Do you have a letter saying that IFARM is willing to work with you in the project? You cannot be simply writing a grant saying that, oh, I'll do it at IFARM. Ask. That's your collaborative agreement. Uh, IFARM is agreeable. No, you say, no, IFARM, they, they are doing service. So I'll just buy the service. So where's the quotation to you? How much does it cost? Okay. Are there commitments for cooperating institutions with the letter of support? So now you say that I'm working with Inform and School of Biological Sciences. Do you have letter of support from the researcher in School of Biological Sciences saying that they are willing to work with you in the project and what is their contribution going to be? Okay. Are the method activity outlined in the proposal effective to accomplish the objective? You see, I'm repeating back here. And repeat it better. This one are the method activity clearly related to the objective. But now it's the method can accomplish your objective. One is related. Okay, it's related. But even though it's related, but I cannot finish it. But it must be able to complete the objective. Have the method activity been assigned to a responsible person? So you know who, usually it's students. We get PhD students, we put them. Or I don't get one PhD, I get two master students. I say, this work you do, this work we do. I cannot be giving the same work to the people. Okay, what is the timetable for the research? Which is your end time. Okay. Tips. Read the application form and take it seriously. Pay attention to the granting objective and criteria. Write clearly. Be succinct, which means that be precise, concise. Avoid ambiguities. Package the application material well, which means that everything is there in sequence. Okay. So now you need to submit to me, right? Okay. I'm going to give you an assignment, of a project paper. Okay. It is in different different pages. So you are keeping writing, suddenly you don't what do you get? align the pages. Okay? First thing should be your information and everything, but you, you put not as a objective in the, the first. Okay? Be honest. Wow. 
why I need to put the odds? Say, for that paper, we can run application during five months. All of you want to get any five months. Am I correct? No, you don't want to do five months. So I've got five months for the application. Okay. Now all of you want to get any five months. But due, due to for you to get any five months, you start to write a lot, put a lot of information, which is not true, which is not relevant. Okay, you think, oh, my project will do this, will do that, I will get this, I will make sure that, so once my project gets, I can tell the kid for one cent. So that is not something right. So that's why, because as I said, the reviewers are very experienced people. Okay? So even like, I'm one of the reviewers, it doesn't mean I'm very experienced, but once we have reviewed, the senior people will re-look into our proposals again. So there are two tiers. So I'm, I'm, we are the one who's doing the preliminary work. So when we commented no, we, we must write why we are commenting no. All the sections we must write, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. And we say yes also. Okay, we say, okay, this, this proposal is good, can be granted. We, we cannot say like that. We must give what are the good points that so, this senior people will look into our comments and look into the proposal, what we did correct on. So, they, they know that they are smart. Okay. So, have your application critically reviewed by colleagues. Why? Whenever you write, when you start at the, your eyes will finish here. The spelling mistakes and everything, you don't see it. Why? Because you have to keep on looking it. Because your brain, you wrote it. Your brain automatically understands that and you jump very fast. Okay, but when you, when you give it to your friend to look at it, she, because she wants to understand that you will read word by word and she will find mistakes, spelling errors and everything. Oh, this one, what, what are you trying to mean? Here, you will say, no, oh, this is what I'm trying to mean. But it's not there. But for you, it is there. Because when you write, your mind speaks, doesn't read. Okay, you have to understand that psychology. That is human nature. Nothing wrong with that. that. That's why you need to give it to someone to read it. Spend time of the application. So when you when you're going to do literature review, let the literature review present the important background. Okay, it's very important. Okay, information about the proposal. Don't go and write everything under the sun, write about the topic that you do, okay? The literature review critically evaluate and synthesize the existing knowledge. The existing knowledge. Are study gaps in knowledge addressed by the study program? So you must tell that what is missing, okay? And how that your project would help you. That, that, that should be your last paragraph at the end. Does the literature review provide the basic of support for the hypothesis or research question? So you only have research question. Does whatever your research questions are there, in the literature review, have you reviewed it and write it about to, add, to, add, to explain so that people will understand your research question? Has the need for the proposal been documented? So, this one will match with this one. Okay, why? Because this is going to answer your problem statement. Okay. Does the literature review appear complete and up to date? Mainly the last five years of research. The best thing is the last three years of it. You need to cite more on that. Don't be putting that, oh, 1970s people have talked about this. 1960 people have talked about it. All are outdated. Because when I started mainly, 
uh, if we don't find the, you know, the basic fundamental information in the media literature. Yeah, uh, correct. Yeah, so it's based on the platform. So everything was go back to the 2001, 2005. So in that case, I wanted to sign more than the first but it's not. No, it's fine. That's what I wanted to tell you. The main theory, if you go back to 1960s, cite the 1960s paper, nothing wrong. But what is the latest development that is going on? You cannot be still citing the the current treatment is by Sana et al. 1938. No. What is the current treatment? You need to talk about the current treatment with the current citing. What is the new thing people are talking about? But the theory of it has to go back. As I said, when I worked with Swaiko Kenzo, the first HPV was found in 1960s. It was found by Alar Zarahundu in 1967. Trying to cite that, when you're talking about SDF page, we all have done SDF page twice. Okay? SDF page, when you talk about the methodology of SDF page, is Limeli at all 1979. You need to cite that because he's the one who discovered the space, but I say space from what he, what he discovered. So how do you are detecting it? So that one has to be as latest as possible. The treatment, the diagnosis of a disease, everything has to go into within five years. But the concept of the diagnosis, the uh, first how it been found. The pathogenicity, everything has to be the original. Okay? So, in our case, like, uh, we have to do it in slow, we have to do it in time, but we have to do it in time. Not more than 10 years ago. Or, let's see. You, okay. We, mu we must. No, 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 like this. Like this. Okay, let's put uh, on this. Okay, let, let, let me explain this which you all will understand it very well. Okay, let's take COVID, which is new. Everyone has gone through it. Everyone have, might have got it. Thanks. Okay. So, what is the gold standard for COVID detection? What is the gold standard? What, do you understand what, the, what is the meaning of gold standard? Artificial. Artificial. So that is the gold standard, which means that even though you do the diagnostic LFA, retro pro assay, when it's positive, you need to go and do artificial to reach one person. Okay, that is the gold standard. So when was the gold standard being implemented? Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty by the WHO. Okay, but until now, what is the gold standard? It's still there. Okay. Fine. You all, you all understand what is the gold standard, right? Okay, let me come to the vital Okay. So what is the gold standard for cervical cancer screening diagnosis? But since when is the gold standard? In 19, 1970s, 1980s. Okay, so it is the gold standard up to now because there is no new method can challenge that. Because, very simple, the pathologists have decided that it's the gold standard. If you are you're, you're going to bring in something new, I'm going to lose. But, but, there is lots and lots of new technology for screening. To screen that you have it or not, then you will confirm it with pep speed. Lord of Lord, what is the latest one? DNA typing, HPV DNA typing. You can type 18 types of HPV DNA in one single PCR. 18 types. So that is the latest.
But the current latest one is that which has been developed three years ago. Okay, so that technology all you must list it here, but the gold standard you cannot run away. Understand? So what is the theory? Okay, HPV DNA is infected by sorry, cervical cancer is caused by HPV 16 and 18 infection. Who discovered it? Again, Alarzahausen. He discovered it when? In the 70s. And in the 80s, they have confirmed 95% of cervical cancer cases are due to HPV 16 and 18. But the latest research, less than five years ago, they have come out with a new statistical. It is only about 75%. You see? See? So, which one you want to write? You need to write the latest one. Uh, and then now, the latest research has come out that in the only was done in 2021, that they have found that pep smear has false negative results up to 34.7%. Precisely 34.7%. Because they used about more than 5,000 smears. And they did it with also PCR. You see, all of this is latest. But still, the old one you need to sign. Because that is the thing that you found. Understand how you need to write literature review? Okay? I'm giving class to write literature review. Is the literature review logical and systematically developed and presented? It's important. So, for research methodology, Overview of research, scientific relationship between variables, again, hypothesis, observation, internal consistency between method, phenomena, and research question has to be there. Sample description, inclusive and exclusive criteria, you must tell if you have patient sample, like what patient that you need to take. When I want to do cervical smear, I cannot take RT. Okay, can I take can I take you for cervical sample screening? <laughs> Cannot. So that is what we call inclusive and exclusive criteria. So only women. Okay. So when I'm going to do prostate cancer, I cannot take all of you. So, so what is the recruitment plan? Material, procedure, data collection, human subject. When you have human subject, you need to have ethical approval. Animal studies need to have ethical approval. Study validity and reliability, assumption, statistical analysis, whether you need or not. You must define. Okay, anything about population numbers, you need statistical analysis. That thing is a must for you to define. What method need to be used? Why they have been chosen? How will you answer that? So management, does the research team have the requisite knowledge? Let's say that you want to work with pap smear sampling guide, cervical cancer. Okay, you need to collect sample. So who's the researcher? Only you, Tapa. Can you go and do cervical smear sampling? You are not a oncologist, sorry, gynecologist. So I don't give you a grant because you don't have a team. Very simple. Your proposal is fantastic. You have written a very good proposal. It should be funded. Just because you don't have a clinician. You don't get it. Okay. Are the necessary facilities available as I say? Okay, like you want to do synchrotron, but you don't have synchrotron. Hmm? Have ethical and confidential issue been addressed? Okay. Is the budget realistic? See, coming back again, hmm? are the reporting arrangements satisfactory? What, what do you mean that reporting arrangement? The grant funders have told you that you need to report every six months your progress. If you don't do it, don't. Like I had a friend okay, from Unima, Mr. Trava, who got funded by Shell. He got an industry funding shell. They didn't give him much, 60,000. But, the, you know, what is the progress report? Every Monday. Every week, 
they discuss what is the progress, what we are going to do next, what is the progress, what we are going to do next. So it depends on the context. You have to obey. But if you feel that the reporting every week you cannot manage, then you cannot apply for the grant. Okay? So is it value for money? Will the knowledge gain justify the money spent? If not, as I say, I'm, I want to develop a biosensor, one three, five hundred ringgit. I will say no, because the current one is only two hundred ringgit. Will the hypothesis be sufficient for rigorous research design? For background, do you do your objective tie in with those of funders? So what they want, if I keep on repeating again, eh? the actual idea is the key to the proposal success. Is it innovative, something new, imaginative? Does it make a real contribution to the knowledge? Or you are just repeating other people's work? When you repeat other people's work, gone. Let's say that you have a PhD thesis, you submitted a PhD thesis, but you haven't published it yet. No data published. So you are writing a proposal based on the PhD thesis saying that it haven't been published. But your PhD thesis itself is a publication which is, could be accessed now online. Okay, we just reviewed a graph. Somebody is applying for a graph. Okay. And then they want to do something, I don't I want to tell one more project. And while we were doing our background search to check that whatever they are doing is okay, suddenly we got a PhD thesis. And the work has been done, completed. So, this person, we have wrote down that the funders, the funders, saying that the funder has to check and things. So, whatever action the funders want to take, they will take. Okay, because that is plagiarism in a, in a, in a different way. Okay, talk to people for their idea, have your own peer review process, data collection, what is the data set? What is the data set published in reliability? So if you get results, if you publish, whether it's reliable or not, people will accept it or not. If people don't accept, then you cannot collect that data. What data you need to collect? What is the data set published validity? If you publish today, and it expires you know, in a year, which means that the data has to be sound. Okay? You cannot be publishing something that has some expiry date kind of thing. Okay? Are they extensively used in, in research? Why did you choose them? Okay, people are choosing CQ values to prove that there is viral load and things and so on. But you are saying that I'm not going to use CQ values. And what are going to use? You are you're saying that I am going to use Delta Delta CT. Delta Delta CT is for expression. No, you are saying that I am going to use Delta Delta CT to see the viral load. Cannot. Can, no, cannot. Because it is not being used at all. So, for you to do that, you have to prove your theory is correct first. You cannot be simply using that, okay? How will you collect them? If you are conducting interviews, what are the procedures would you use? As I say, conducting interviews, how you want to collect your data? So there is a method for that. Okay, later when we come for data collection. Have your proposal ready, sorry, read by a colleague in your department and colleague in your research office? If you don't even share, okay, like, I am working with Swiker Cancer. Tana wants to work with Swiker Cancer. We are colleagues. I am not a supervisor, she is not a student. We, we work together, she is a PhD student, I am a PhD student. But when she shared to me, when I read, I don't understand. That is a very big question mark. That, that is why you share with your peers. Once you do your research proposal that you need to submit for here, share among yourself and read it. Do that peer review process. Ask your, between your friends, so that you read yours, she read her, yours, 
and you get, oh, I don't understand this, what do you have written? Oh, I written this, oh, it doesn't seem to be there. So you change. Okay, trust me, you'll get better way of writing it out. Preparing budget. So when you want to prepare budget, you need to see equipment, purchase or IAPs. Where you, do you need computers? Do you need telephone and everything facts? But now they, they don't give you this much already. Salaries. Okay, so you in Malaysia you can only pay your students or research assistants. Okay, but in UK, in, in US, I as a researcher, I can pay myself. Yeah. If I pay myself from the grant, the university doesn't pay me. The university give me space to work. So there are different arrangements. It, does, it doesn't work here yet. Okay, I'm not sure about your countries. How does it work? Okay, stationaries, paper, consumable product, printing, photocopying, and everything. Okay. Travel. So if you're traveling to collect sample, people can claim mileage, fuel, and everything is allowed. Overhead, 10 to 20 percent is usually charged by the discipline institute for accommodating the grant. So when we get government grant, this one is not charged. But when we get industry funding, for them to manage the grant here, university charges 10 percent. So if I get 100,000, 10,000 is taken by the university for them to manage the grant, pay everything. Only I have only 90,000 to work. Okay, so that is the room. Lot of places. Okay, audit fee may be required if it should require accounts to be audited. Okay, certain big grants, big big grants, they ask you to appoint an auditor to audit all your receipts and things. So that is difficult. Okay, so preparing budget, keep salary cost limited, approve your work time, it depends. If the funding body says that students can be only paid 1,500 per month maximum, you cannot put 2,000. Okay. On costs are included in the calculation, payroll, taxes, supernations, leave loading and everything. Previously, when I started to work, I got paid to run before I got scholarship. So during that time, when I'm being appointed, I'm being appointed as a worker. So I'll get my employee provident fund and everything. But now, no, you only get as honorarium. Okay, but it depends on the grant. Certain big grants, they allow you to hire research officers. When we hire research officers, we pay them 3,000. It means that our budget is not 3,000. Our budget is going to be about 3,600 or something. Because we need to pay their employee provident fund, and uh, they are what you call, it, called bonuses and everything. So from 11 months it becomes, sorry, from 12 months it becomes 14 months pay, something like that. Okay. Contract arrangements for short-term employment flexibility, if, if, if it is allowed. Current rates quoted for consultant or professional services. So you need someone. So you are having patient sample. You are taking the slide. You are taking liver slices and put, but you need now a pathologist to look into it and give you a report. So you must include that in. If not, when we review, then who's going to read that and give you confirmation? It is not there. So you didn't plan your research well. Okay? So equipment cost should be based on the actual quotation and current prices. So application always take longer than you think. Then you seek help and think, consult sources of external fund, discuss project funding, source timing with the research facilitators, your dean or someone. I'm repeating again, make sure you have identified the right grant for the project, read guidelines, obtain at least one copy of successful application to your chosen scheme and go through it. Okay. Identify an additional, why I put this? Your seniors have done the RX 500. Some of them have gotten A. Go and take that and have a look how they are doing, how they got an A, which will help you. Okay? So, with this one, you will need referees or nominated assessors if the grant requests. Okay? 
So build an application series in the word file. This one I'm just giving you. Obtain advice on your draft. I'm repeating from the chairperson or something. This one is for Grant or for your, from your colleagues. Redraft in the light of criticism review. People give you criticism. When you send, I criticize. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Oh, what? 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 All this, this fellow is always criticizing my work. We are, we are criticizing you. It's not criticizing. We are improving you. Okay, even your colleagues. Don't take it as criticism. No one is perfect. Even I am. I'm saying I'm not perfect. So we receive criticism for us to improve ourselves. Okay, submitting application. Make sure you download the PDF copy of, for your reference. Now, all is online. Previously, you would say that have few art copies for yourself. A successful outcome. Money used replacement teaching is usually managed by the center. Other monies through the research committee. Unsuccessful resubmit. Don't be disheartened. Consult colleague, obtain advice, send proposal to a different funder. Reconsider project, bring in more co investigators to improve. Okay, so when you prepare, develop grant calendar, track record, pre develop your proposal, make multiple applications if necessary, follow up, follow up on rejection, ask the agency for feedback on application. Usually they will give. Why they don't give you? What is the things goes wrong? So managing grant if successful, it is a matter of funding agency to decide how money is being paid. Okay, accountability of researcher keep record of what is expected contract, make copyright arrangement, keep financial statements. Now, everything that we spend, it's not it's not easy to hold grants. So let's say that the grant that I have is for cervical cancer, and I'm going on protein mix. Suddenly, I buy things on genomics. I'll be questioned that why I bought things for genomic purposes. Okay. So they are go to that extent now. When I started my as a PhD student, my supervisor used to buy all the things that he want for different different projects in the grant. They because that is the time everyone was new, but things now everything is streamlined. They even go and check what whatever things that I'm buying. Okay, so things are now becoming very strict. Common failing, do not have profile for work. Which means that we don't have prior, prior experience of managing grant. Application from a state city institution that has already a lot of contracts at the national body need to award to a different source. Usually sometimes that will happen. Like USM. For example, USM already have a lot of FRTS grant. Previous batch, previous batch. So this time around, they were trying to give it to others. Yes, an applicant should be treated. That it means, and, and you going to apply during the time, that means you are not lucky. It, it will happen when the government giving you big, big funding. Okay? Applicant fail to demonstrate knowledge of specific contacts. This happens. Okay? Because you are not aware. Regardless of what is the application in, in, in his application, the known profile of the researcher or research institution is politically less attractive than from other source. Which means that, uh, oh, if I'm from Inform, oh, they think that I'm big. Oh, if I'm from University of Malaya, the high impact research is still, they think, oh, I'm fantastic. No. It comes to your track record. Okay, and when we evaluate, we, we no, since the beginning, what the research funding they had until now, everything is recorded inside the system. Because you need to key in all the things. If not, if you don't key in that, you don't get funding because you don't update the information. Does not address the element. The design approach does not appear convincing in its ability to address the objective. You see? So the project does not seem to convince the objective that you have written. So you are the one who's written the objective and the design, but both doesn't match. So you don't get. Application itself is academic rather than real world. So it's very, very academic purposes. You know what? 
Okay. It's not well presented, sloppy, oh, finish. So any question that you have, it is quite boring, I know that. Okay, I know that. That's why I'm trying to use the real life examples to explain to you. Okay? So I'll have an assignment for you to do all this. Okay? In our next slide, when I start, I'll explain to you how I'll give you the time I'll go and upload it, go through it, relax first. I will I'll explain to you what you need to do on the assignment. It's not assignment, it's a project paper. Okay? And then I will upload it after I explain to you. Then you have to And that project paper I will give you enough time. So next part I will tell you when. Our next part is not very long, it's Wednesday morning. Okay, so thank you so much.
你对面吗？老师，讲话的。